So hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, doing things just a little bit different. Staying inside, I'm gonna talk about my switch from DSLR then to mirrorless. Um, obviously, I'll get quite a lot of questions from people saying, you know, how are you finding the new mirrorless system? How are you finding the R3? Do you miss the DSLR? All that sort of stuff. Um, so to save a lot of questions, I thought I'd give you my personal opinion. So this is my opinion based on what I like and what I enjoy and what works for me. Um, so this is by no means for everybody. Everybody's got their own preference of how they like to operate their camera, if they like mirrorless, if they like film, if they like DSLR, medium format, you name it, for whatever you need, um, for whatever your type of photography. So as many of you know who've been following me for a while, I used to own a 1DX Mark II, uh, before that the 1DX, and I, I was reluctant to change from DSLR, um, you know, over to the mirrorless system. Wasn't really sure in the early days of some of the Canon bodies. I wasn't quite convinced that they were gonna, you know, quite hit the mark, battery life, all these other little things that were just niggling me. It just, I wanted to iron out a few of the issues before I took the plunge. And I did take the plunge now, I think nearly two years now. So I sold the 1DX2 and purchased the R3. Quite a big purchase, quite a lot of money. And, you know, I'm really enjoying um, using the R3 and the mirrorless system. You know, it is um, a bit of a game changer in many ways, but not all for me, really. Um, and I'll just go into some some sort of pros and cons, really, of, of, of why I like a mirrorless camera. Um, and there are a great deal of pros and there are a few cons for me. Um, so first off, Canon R3, um, you know, it is a great camera, you know, it really is, you know, it's, it's expensive. We say it's Canon's top of the line, it isn't really. That's the 1DX Mark III there, that's the top of the line camera at the moment. Um, and the R3 is a different type of camera really. It's very lightweight a lot lighter than um, the 1DX, so that's a plus point. Its weight is really, really light. It's fitted here with um, a rubber um, cover from Easy Cover there, just to protect the camera while I'm out and about. So weight's a big thing. You know, I think it's, it's about 500 grams lighter than this. I mean, this is, you know, this is solid. This is a solid body. Um, you know, you can feel it there when you plonk it on the table. You know, it is, is quite a beast. Um, so. This is a great fast action camera. The autofocus is phenomenal. You know, it really is the IAF. This has got um, IAF, but only face detection for humans only. It's not got animal. This has got animal AF. You know, you put, you lock this onto a target, to an owl, you know, to an owl species, to a bird of prey, even at distance. It will lock on that head, lock on that eye, and it's absolutely fantastic. I've got three modes set up at the back for different types of focusing situations. So whole area, one spot and then just a, an area with a small surround on it and it locks onto that um, eye every single time. I don't use the um, my eye detections where I'm moving my eye around the uh, viewfinder and then it locks on. Um, I just haven't played with that much. So the AF, massively you know, accurate and it's phenomenal. It's so fast, it really is. So that's a massive game changer. But on the flip side to that, I find it's a bit lazy it's all a bit easy. I like a bit of a challenge. I like to have something, I like to work for it a little bit. With these, you just point shoot and it follows and you just put your hand around and boom, off you go. 30 frames a second, lovely job. Pretty much 99% of the time, these are in focus. So AF, frames per second, 30. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, it's ridiculously fast and it does the job. So weight, AF, frames per second, all really, really good features of the uh, camera. Battery is the same as the 1DX, the one, uh, the 1DX2 and 3. Um, but the battery life on these, constantly running the EVF at the back, the electronic viewfinder, it drains the battery real quick, you know, comparatively to this um, camera, which can do 
three and a half thousand shots on one battery charge where this probably gets away with about a thousand you know there is a difference there you do have to take some spare batteries and they're not cheap so another minus point there is is definitely the um the battery life on these isn't great because you've got that evf constantly working you're constantly looking through finger on the button you know and it does drain that battery another thing that i'm not massively keen on is um is looking through the viewfinder with the EVF. You know, I don't like the false representation of what you're seeing. You're looking through, it's a, it's a computer, it's, it's a generated image into the viewfinder. It's, you don't look through and see what you get. You know, if you're looking through the optical viewfinder on the 1DX3 there, you're looking through, it's so, so much clearer. It's so much more like you're really there with the subject. You know, you're like, you feel as if you're seeing that subject even though you're looking for your viewfinder with this, it just doesn't look real to life. Um, and I don't like the look of that. You know, I, I go back to using that. I love looking through the viewfinder. You know, it's so big, so much going on there. You can really see what's going on with these. Still not convinced really for me that, you know, they are, um, I don't really enjoy it looking through <laughs> to be fair. So yeah, the EVF there is for me personally, a bit of a downside. Um, it's good when you look at it when you've got all your shooting data so you're looking through you can work around the system it's great when you're doing video you can look through you can track move around you know there are some good things about an EVF I just don't like what it looks like when I'm looking through the viewfinder um, another thing I don't like as well is is the slight delay so you're there in idle, you know, you put your camera on, your camera switches off, subject comes, boom. There's a few seconds there, very small amount of a delay. Whereas you suddenly touch that, bang, straight away, you're straight in. Um, so, and I have missed a few shots with this because of the fact that, you know, you have got that slight delay there. So that for me, you know, is, is slightly problematic as well. Um, but uh, the silent, you know, the silent shutter is a massive game changer, really, for sensitive subjects like deer, twitchy bird species that aren't, you know, who can pick up like owl species. If you do things like foxes, if you do like badgers, you know, mammal families, something with real sensitive hearing, you know, using the silent shutter on these, absolutely fantastic. Negative side, you've got to be aware of what you're pressing because obviously it just runaways with itself. Um, but, you know, silent shutter is one of the main reasons why I got one of these, because of the fact that, you know, wildlife would hear the clunk of the uh, DSLR chugging away. I like the articulated screen at the back, which is really, really good. So that's great in video situations, like glaring on it, you can just turn that around. That's really good. Functionality of the buttons, it's all really good. I like the layout, it's, it's not much different than using the old um, 1DX series bodies, um, you know, they've got the 1DX2 um, over there and I've got obviously the DX3 there. This is the 1DX2, that's quite noisy. Um, the dx 3s not a great deal different. Um, and then the DX before that was an absolute beast. That was just working away. So, but saying that with the 1DX3 there, I can use live view, silent shutter, and I can do 20 frames a second with that one. So, and it's quite nice using that live view at the back when I'm taking an image, I can use the full, um, the full area in the, of the AF points is up to near a thousand, I think. And I can then, as I'm looking through the viewfinder with that, you know, I look through and I've got limited range of what I can change the focus points. But when I'm in live view and I'm shooting 20 frames, I can really, if I wanna put a subject right out to the left, I can then top focus and then give it plenty of space to move, which is a real nicety. And the same with this one. With that one there, obviously it's quite limiting. So, you know, there's another thing really that is amazing for um, sensitive, shy subjects. So guys, another major real bonus of having um, new mirrorless cameras is the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization system or whatever else the other camera manufacturers call it that can allow up to like eight stops of stabilization. Um, you know, it's key when you're taking pictures of subjects, at very low shutter speeds in low light, can obviously save and capture that shot that otherwise with a normal DSLR would then render that quite blurred. 
um, and also shooting video, you know, there's a major difference there when shooting video, certainly with um, in-body um, image stabilization there, which makes a massive difference if you were to see the difference it makes if you have got it and you haven't got it. And obviously bearing in mind that IBIS and similar body stabilization systems on a lot of mirrorless cameras, they don't all have it. Obviously the sort of enthusiast model, semi and the professional models generally do. But that's something really worth bearing in mind. The IBIS system is a big game changer too. The, um, the 1DX Mark III has got stabilization, but um, not quite the same um, as this has got. I mean, this is considerably, you know, different stabilization system. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Okay, another thing as well um, is obviously the lens selection. Now I'm using currently my EF lenses and I've got some RF lenses. So there are more choice of EF lenses naturally because there are the older series of lenses. The RF um, Canon lenses that are coming out now, which are coming out quite frequently now, um, and they do offer apparently slightly better um, optics um, than the old EF version. But you know, myself, I've not really seen any drop off in that at all. And you know, I don't see any difference at all in um, the actual quality between an RF and an EF lens. But there are generally more choices with EF and there are less choices with the RF, but eventually the RF lenses will then um, overtake the EF versions and the EF versions will no longer be made. So, um, you know, that's something to bear in mind really. But then again, the second hand market there for EF lenses will be considerably cheaper than then going to um, the RF versions. So I've got here the, this is the um, EF RF converter there that allows me to use EF lenses on uh, the new R system. There is no glass in there, it's just hollow. Okay, and that literally allows your um, lens to be used um, with your old EF to, to RF. And there's, I've not seen any image drop off in that at all. I've got this one here, which is the control ring adapter. So I've got the little knurl bit in the middle that allows me to have the same functionality as the RF lenses would have. But that's a big, a big plus point for the mirrorless system. Um, so, you know, shooting in low light, as I said, and um, also for the, for the video side of things as well. But bearing in mind also there that allowing you having the mirrorless system over the DSLR system will not allow your composition to be better, will not allow your images to be better. So just bear that in mind. It's just dependent on what you think you need it for. Yeah, inevitably with the DSLR as well, um, you know, they've, they've done all they can to it. I think they put the last drop of what they could into the DX3. Um, and then it, it came to a point where they thought, well, there's nothing else we can do with a DSLR because it was such a limiting factor with the way it operates compared with the mirrors. I mean, the mirrors, this is just like a sealed hard drive. You know, they do get really hot. That's another negative point. You know, if you shoot in 4K 120 um, or, you know, even up to 6K and stuff, you know, it starts to get hot. They say these don't overheat, but I've had overheat warnings on a heat wave day when it's, it's chugging away there, doing like five minutes of video. You know, it does come up with an overheat warning and they do shut down. So there's another negative. You put that on, yes, you've got a limited shooting um, capability regards to the time on the cards, but then you just start them up again and they're good to go. So, you know, you've got that as well. They overheat, they're more electronic. There's probably more prone to going wrong with this you know, you can play football with that thing and it'll just keep coming back at you, you know, whereas these things are more electronic and they do overheat and they do more prone to problems. So there's plus and minus points for both really. Um, still got the same weatherproofing, the ergonomics is great, you know, really, really great camera all round. So just picking this up, it just feels right in your hand, you know, I got this and the DX2. Um, I bought the DX2 really for, for workshops and bits as well. Um, and I bought this DX3 because it was a good price. Um, it was actually rated as quite bad condition, but it's absolutely perfect. There's one little mark on it and it's hardly been used 120,000 shutter actuations out of 500,000. And I love using this, and I'm using this more and more now for subjects that aren't so sensitive and aren't so twitchy, although I can still use the, um, the Live View um, Silent Shutter, which I think is an absolute game changer for this. It does great video as well, 5.5K raw, not that I need that. I shoot 4K max anyway, and a bit of, um, and a bit of uh, 
you know, 1080, um, as well as um, full HD slow-mo as well with this one. But that's the thing they did. They got to a point where I think they couldn't throw any more into a DSLR and they had to then move on. Obviously with the video capabilities now of these sort of cameras here, you know, the R3, 6K, um, and like the R5, 8K, and other manufacturers were well delivering equal video specs. I don't ever need that. You know, I, I don't need that spec really of video. 4K is absolutely fine for me. Um, so yeah, I sold all my kit, I sold all my DSLRs to then buy the mirrorless system and I've got an R7 as well. Um, but when I recouped a bit of money, saved a bit more and I saw these come up, I just thought I want these workhorses back in my outfit really and I do use them. Um, probably no, not so much as a DX2 there but I do use the DX3 quite a bit um, and I love them. I absolutely love them, you know, um, and I don't think I'd ever get rid of them. Um, my personal feeling is they're both great cameras. The DSLRs are not dead. You know, they are um, tried and tested cameras that will not let you down in whatever weather. You drop them, bang them, whatever. They just keep on coming. And the battery life's amazing. You know, it really is. Um, so for me, personally, I know it's a bit of waffle on there, guys, but a lot of people keep asking me, you know, how do I find it, you know? and and, you know, I think they've got the best of both worlds there, really. Mirrorless will probably advance more and more. Battery life will get better. Maybe the EVFs will be slightly better. Who knows? But it's going to go up in frames per second. It's going to go up in the video specs. But do I really want that? No. You know, I don't need that at all. I was quite happy with the DX2 with 4K at 60, which was great. Which just the slow-mo was letting me down a bit with the quality. So obviously went on to the, to the R3, which gives you 4K 120, which is really good. Also, another um, reason why I switched across was because I run workshops, um, I do talks and things. So if then someone comes on a workshop with a mirrorless camera, I don't really know much about them and I don't use them. I kind of feel the credibility is not there. So I have to have to be able to operate both systems um, in, in order for me to deliver a, a workshop um, the best way I can. So um, there's there's pretty much some of the, the whys and wayfors and the pros and cons of, of why I think personally DSLRs aren't dead and I think you know they they've got a place in the market still and and if you're after any sort of um, if you're getting into photography or you want a second body and there are loads and loads of second-hand cameras out there on the market from each manufacturer Nikon Sony Olympus Canon obviously these guys here you can pick up a, a pretty bashed up 1DX Mark III for probably just under 2000 uh, and you can pick up a 1DX2 for you know, around about a thousand, maybe just over. So all really good cameras, you know, and if you're thinking of um, starting up wildlife photography and you think you have to go mirrorless, you don't have to go mirrorless, go DSLR. Start DSLR and then go mirrorless, you know, and if you're already, you know, have, you know, a model like this, obviously you know what you're talking about, um, don't feel pressured then to move over to the mirrorless system. You know, it, it really doesn't make any difference really. And I think the point to note there is that these cameras do not take better images than each other. You know, 24 million pixels, 21, 21. You know, are you really gonna see the difference? Probably not. You know, R5, you know, 45 million pixels. Yeah, a, a great camera, but the storage space is huge. Um, you know, you gotta think about that as well. But for the wildlife photographer, max speed, you know, having these guys, you know, is really, really good. So that's one thing to bear in mind is that they will not take any better images. Yes, low light, that's slightly better than this one. And this one's slightly better than that one. But that's just technology as it advances. I think there's like one or two stops difference with this one. You know, is that really enough to change? Probably not. Um, but that's just my personal, you know, personal view really, you know, scan the second hand market, have a look, you know, don't feel that pressure to change across. You know, I didn't until I really thought I had to go across. Um, and I've got other cameras as well. I've got a 5 disr in the cupboard and uh, I use that for landscape and for macro in good light. I've got a 5D3 also, which I use for camera trapping and um, one that if it does get pinched and it's quite bashed up, I'm not too worried if it gets stolen, but I'd still be gutted. I've got the R7 as well, which is for um, birds in flight, on the go, lightweight um, outfit, just with 100, 500. Um, so yeah, probably a bit excessive to many why I've got so so many cameras, 
but they're all there um, for a purpose and it is my job you know I do this day in day out so I need the tools then to allow me to deliver what I need to deliver um, but you know that's that works for me and this is as I said my own personal view if you do feel as if I've missed anything you know please let me know in the comment section below if you don't agree with what I said fine you know go for it but this is only my personal opinion I'm not trying to push it out there and tell people what they should do I'm just saying these are my personal opinions and hopefully it may help people um, if they feel that they want to move across from you know DSLR to mirrorless or if they've got mirrorless and they always regret um, moving from DSLR and there's no reason why you can't go and grab yourself a bargain because um, these cameras will go on um, for years to come yet and um, yeah if I had a choice I think if I'm working in the field um, doing my wildlife photography which camera would I like to have with me most of the time I would say probably the DX3 or the 2 um, but for sensitive subject for me the R3 is is an absolute you know game changer for silent subjects it would be my go-to camera for the video side of things it'd be my go-to camera you know doing what 4k 120 doing um, 4k 60 you know ultra low light maybe as well you can also use that one but you know if you're a portrait landscape macro photographer probably not really much point in going for the silent shutter option as it doesn't really make any difference but obviously for wildlife sensitive subjects you know it really does help and also you've got to look at the the welfare of the wildlife as well you know the impact we have when we're on the ground in their environment taking pictures you know noisy shutter off they go disturb them off a kill whatever you know using the silent shutter limits that interference we have with wildlife to let them get on and do what they do without disturbance so uh, yeah but that's um, my personal view guys if you would like to leave me comments in the section below much appreciated you know do you agree with me do you not agree with me also just give me your maybe your feelings of when you switched over you know have your regrets do you like the mirrorless system you can never go back to a dslr yes when you pick the camera up sometimes it feels like you are going back in time just a little um but uh, you know these cameras are amazing and as i said before um you won't um you won't take any better images um with this camera over these cameras really um and also don't get carried away with this um the pixel you know the pixel race you know you got to think about 45 megapixel workflow is you know is pretty huge i expect the r1 will come out probably be 35 40 frames a second with 8k video maybe higher do you really need it the storage on the computer already is maxed out so you've got to think about that as well but uh Thanks very much, guys. As I said, quite a lot of waffling there, but this is only applicable for the people that, who probably are wondering about going across to mirrorless or have and coming back or whatever. Um, and if there's anybody out there that has gone from DSLR to mirrorless and then sold mirrorless and gone back, it'd be really interesting. And please, it's open to any camera manufacturer, Sony, Nikon, Olympus, whatever. Um, you know, please let me know. So that's it for me, guys. Thanks very much indeed for watching. If you don't subscribe to the channel and you fancy um, giving it a go, please click that all important subscribe button and that like. And please, you know, if you're new, leave us a comment. It's always much appreciated. And for my regulars, thanks very much indeed for all your support since the move from UK to Canada. Got lots coming soon. Uh, got one coming very soon, um, which is a bit less talking and more wildlife all being well. But uh, as always, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Beautiful hummingbird. I've never photographed a hummingbird in my life. And uh, what an amazing bird.